going to get this across, but it's vitally important. In verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye. This is how Jesus is instructing us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now I want you to know, in the old covenant, God was the creating covenant-keeping God. People in the old covenant were never called his children. They were his creation. They were his subjects. They were his admirers, his worshipers. But this statement here changes everything about him and us to each other. Our Father, who art in heaven. For the first time, he's called our Father. Now that's vitally important because that immediately changes our relationship with him and with each other. In fact, a couple of places it cries, Abba, Father. So I want you to understand that Jesus coming to earth as death, burial, and resurrection also changed relationships and how we are to relate to each other. Now, he is our heavenly Father. And if we believe in Jesus, it says that Ephesians 2 and Amplified, that God gave us the very life of Christ himself. So we have the life of the Son in us. And we are, it calls us, even in Galatians, the children of God. And that is so important. Because if I'm a child of God, and you're a child of God, and remember, anything in the spiritual dimension is more absolute and more real than anything in the physical dimension. So, if I'm a child of God, spiritually, then that means more than being a child of T.A. Conklin physically. Because of my relationship with my spiritual father takes precedent over my relationship with my earthly father. He is my heavenly father. Now, it's not going to take a long time this morning to get this across. I just want you to hear it now. If he is my heavenly father, and he is your heavenly father, what does it make us? Brothers and sisters to each other. And it's not just religiously saying, well, you're my sister. You're my brother. No, no. Absolutely. You are more my brothers and sisters than my natural born brothers and sisters. If you are his children and I'm his child and he's our father, we are family. We are brothers and sisters to each other in actuality. Not symbolically or religiously. We are brothers and sisters to each other forever and ever. And we need to act that way towards each other. And uh, I don't know if you can see that absolutely and plainly this morning. You are my brothers and sisters more so than my family. You're my family more so than my family back in Georgia. Because spiritual family takes precedent over natural born family. And you are, I want you to think of this, 
I mean, we think Jesus was so special, and he was, because he was the Son of God. Well, what do you think you are? If you're a child of God, then you're a son and daughter of God, as much as Jesus was. And that's our relationship with him. And that determines our relationship with each other. So he forever changed our relationships. They're not the same anymore. It's incredible that God Almighty is my Father. Really. Not just saying it because ain't that cute? (laughs) No. He is our Heavenly Father. Our Father who is in Heaven. And Jesus started off the prayer that way. And what He said was revolutionary. Our Father who art in Heaven. He didn't say my Father. Our Father. So literally, not just religiously or symbolically or something nice to say. I want you to see it for the hard truth it is. God is literally our heavenly divine Father. And then that makes us heavenly divine beings. We're no longer just lowly peasants reaching up to God. No. He's made, us, he's, he's made us to seat with Him in heavenly places. We're seated with Him in the throne of God. So we shouldn't be reaching up to Him. We should be reaching down to help those that don't know Him. Leading them to know Him. And we are so honored that He is our Father. And we're so honored that makes us spiritual, in Christ, in God, absolute, brothers and sisters. Understand that. And let us begin to act that way toward one another. Because even when we're wrong, we're brothers and sisters. And when we're right, we're brothers and sisters. And we may squabble, because families do, But we're brothers and sisters. So you literally are. When I say brother, I don't mean symbolically, well, he's my church brother. No, he is more my brother than my naturally born brother. And I should see it that way and act that way toward him and you. We are family. Amen. And that's an incredible thing. So Jesus forever changed relationships in the earth and in eternity. When he said, Our Father, who art in heaven. So thank you, Lord. So we all have the same Father. That's incredible. That means not symbolically or religiously. We are literally family to each other. And we need to see that and rejoice in that and try to live by that. And we have a big family. Think how many people are born again across this world even just today. Not yesterday or the day before, but today. Millions. And I remember what he told me about that when I went to him and he's calling on my life and say, tell my people how much I love them. And I said, Lord, I don't know if I can do that. Because if I don't experience that, how can I express that? He said, son, you've been training all your life. You remember the story? You've been training all your life to do that. I chose you to be the grandson of Enoch Norman Stolle because I wanted you to grow up wanting to be like him. And you did. 
And what was he, son? Remember? He was the head of a big family, and that's all I ever wanted to be. So when Jesus says, Our Father who is in heaven, it was the beginning of the fulfillment of God's desire to be a father. He wanted to be a father to us so much, so incredibly much. In fact, if you look at Ephesians chapter 2 in the Amplified Body, In Ephesians chapter 2, listen to this. Verse 4, but God, so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. He did this as a response to his love for us, not our love for him. Even when we were dead in our own shortcomings, trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. And who is Christ? God's Son. He gave us the very life of Christ himself. The same new life with which he quickened him for us by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation, and raised us up together with him, and made, that's the word past tense, made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him. That's equal seating in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. And I love this next part. He did this, that he may clearly demonstrate to the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor, his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Christ Jesus. So, he did all this to satisfy his own love for us. That's how much he loves us. He is, and he is thrilled. Because he's finally a father through Christ Jesus. And since he did this, and that was one of the great reasons for it, we should know how important that is to him and begin to see it, understand it, thank him for it, and begin to act like that. We are literally brothers and sisters to each other and will be forevermore. That incredible? And he does have a big family now. Lord. So when I say good morning, brothers and sisters, I literally mean that. I thank you for being here so we can join together as a family and see ourselves as who we really are in him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Do you understand that? So thank God that he changed our relationships with God and with each other forever and ever and ever. And one of the great joys for God Almighty was that relationship was changed. And he became not a God, but a Father to us. He is our Father God, God the Father. So I thank God I have an incredible Father. And when you go read everything that he says a Father should be, he's talking about himself too. He says a Father that don't take care of his own is worse than an infidel. So I guarantee you, he's going to take care of us if you just believe him and let him do it, get out of his way. All our needs are met. They were met before we were ever born. 
because that scripture is eternal. All our needs are met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When I get up and spend my hour or two with the Lord every morning, that's one of the great scriptures I remember. And I thank him for many years of life in the earth and the future, and that all the needs for all those years are already met. I don't have to worry about it. And I don't have to worry about winning and everything if I get out of his way, because it says he causes us to triumph in all things in Christ Jesus. We can't lose. And we don't have to do anything to get it. All we have to do is accept it. Only believe. What a wonderful life we have. What a great father he is. So I tell you, let's begin to see ourselves more in reality. Ask him to show it to us and help us to realize and experience it more every day. That we are brothers and sisters in him. We're family. You don't have to miss being with your brother and sister if they're not in town. They're sitting in this room right now. Amen. So when we celebrate Jesus this year, let's just don't thank him for our salvation. Let's thank him for being one with God and therefore being the children of God and therefore being brothers and sisters to one another. Because that's what he brought us. Our relationship with each other changed forever and ever. Thank God for Jesus Christ. So every time you see someone who believes in Jesus, know that they're more your brother and sister than your natural born brothers and sisters. The Bible says, there is he that's closer than a brother. That's someone who is in covenant. Covenant brothers closer than a natural brother. And we are covenant brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ and the covenant of grace and truth. So let's enjoy this Christmas and try to understand more about what all it means to us and what all God accomplished in Jesus Christ. And that God wanted to be a father to us so bad. He sent Jesus to die for us so that he could. If he wants to be a father to us so bad, surely we can be children that want to love him as much as he loves us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. What greater could he give so when we say Merry Christmas to each other now let's remember what it really means it really is Merry and by the way according to the world you can't say Merry Christmas it's offensive because it offends people of other faiths well I'm sorry he said that there'll be days that you'll be hated and persecuted just like I was bring it on so I just solve it this way. I say, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. You see, there's about 20, 30 holidays celebrated this time of year. So wish them Happy Holidays, but that don't we have to stop saying Merry Christmas. It's just the world wants to take the Lord out of this world. It says now, now they're trying to pass a law. To do away with Christmas. Yeah, they're just going to vote it out. Sorry, it won't work. Ain't never going to work. And they're trying to pass this law and make it illegal to worship Christmas. But you know, it makes me rejoice. Because, you know, they're not trying to stop any other religion. They welcome them. They want you to worship other religions. Why? 
because it's the devil and his religions. The reason they don't want you us to worship Christ is because that one's real. And of course it offends him because he said he was an offense to those people that didn't believe in him. He said, I didn't come to bring peace. I come to bring division. I come to turn the two of the family against the three, father against the son, the daughter against the mother. Why? Because when you choose him, you separate yourself from everybody else, even if you don't want to. Because they will separate from you. So what should our response to be? Pray for those who persecute you. Just pray for them. They can't hurt us anyhow. See, I believe it when he said he placed his blessing on us. He placed his blessing on me. If I'm blessed of him, what do I have to worry about? Ain't no curse going to come on me. Can't. I'm blessed of the Lord. Remember, all those scriptures are not just cute little things to make you feel good. They are the truth, the real truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. He has caused us to triumph in all things. Well, there you go. What are you worried about? All things work together for good for those who love God. So no matter what it looks like, in the end, it's going to be our good. What the devil meant for evil, God turns into our good. So all the devil does is give God material to bless us with. And I remember this scripture, and I want you to start quoting it to the Lord and praying it and meditate on it. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show you great and mighty things which you know not. You want to know things about this life and about God you don't know yet? Just call, call on him and ask him. And he says he'll show you. I remember that all the time. I remember that song. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And show you great and mighty things which you know not. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me. Now, you ought to be able to remember that and put it in the song. We're so blessed, and I'm so ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, into this earth. And we don't know yet all the things that that brought to us, but we're learning more. He's showing us those great and mighty things. Amen? But I want you to know... We are truly brothers and sisters. And I'm proud to have you as brothers and sisters. Thank you. I'm so glad he chose you. He chose us to be each other's brothers and sisters. Isn't that incredible? And if he chose us to be brothers and sisters, we ought to be happy with that. Maybe some things I don't like about you. Some things you don't like about me ain't got nothing to do with me showing you with respect of being my brother or sister. I can disagree without stopping our relationship. I don't even agree with my wife on everything. Don't stop me from loving her. So thank God. We have so much to be thankful for. And the people in the world don't know who they are. They don't know why they're here. They don't know what their purpose is. They're just wandering around out there trying to live each day and get closer to what they think they want. Bring them to church. Let them learn who they really are and how blessed they are. When they accept Jesus, the blessing of God is upon them. But I sure am glad he chose me. I don't know why he chose me. But he said I'm part of the chosen generation, the royal priesthood. 
Because if he hadn't have chose you, you could have never seen or recognized Jesus as being Lord. So if you believe Jesus is Lord and you've accepted him in your life, let me tell you this, God chose you. So you're chosen. That's awesome. I didn't choose him. He chose me. So why would he choose me and then not give me the blessings that go with the choosing? He wouldn't. He wants to bless us in all things. I wish above all things you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So thank you for being here this morning. And I thank God for this time of the year, this season. Have you noticed, <clears throat> and I don't think it was planned that way, maybe. I think it's just the spirit in the air this time of the year. It's the spirit of giving. God gave his son, so how do we celebrate it? We give gifts to one another. Wise men brought gifts. There's something about Jesus that just makes you want to give. So whatever you give this year, give in the name of Jesus. Might as well. Sow it in your future. But there is a spirit of giving this time of the year. Everybody's looking for something to give. And then there's those that are totally selfish and self-centered. They're only looking to get. Get, get, get. My name's Jimmy. Take all you give me. (laughs) Glory. So thank you for being here this morning to worship the Lord, to learn that we're family, we're brother and sister. It don't take forever to say something. If you got something to say, you can say it pretty quick. I'm trying to stretch it right now. <laughs> it's already been said. But we go to church and we keep it by time of clock. And we shouldn't. And I want to be able to get you out early. You have so much to do this time of year got to go buy me gifts and think about me all the time. I don't want to hinder that. So I'm going to let you go what would be considered early, but it's not early. You know why it's not early? Because the Lord, what the Lord want me to tell you, I've told you. That's it. So when you leave here today, greet each other's brother and sister and know that they really are your brother or sister in Christ Jesus. I thank you for being here. The Lord thanks you for being here. Now, as I said next Sunday, I I hope you come. We're going to make it quick so you can get back home and do all you got to do. Because I want you to be with your family next Sunday on Christmas Day. But how... It's only ever six, seven years that we can actually celebrate the Lord's birthday on the Lord's birthday. So come be with us. Let us sing some songs. Let us cut the birthday cake. Enjoy him. And then go home and be with our families. All right? Now, let me say one more time, if there's anyone here that needs help for Christmas, you need to let us know.